These are the notes from module 19, where we're getting introduced to probability. So some uh, vocabulary first that you should know. Uh, we'll be dealing with sets of numbers partially. So um, a subset is just a set of numbers that falls inside of a set of numbers. Uh, and just pay attention to the notation. If you see, um, if you see that kind of like sideways U, that means a subset. That means that every element of C, every number that C is part of B, but not necessarily vice versa. Not every element of B is part of set C. An intersection is kind of like an overlap. Okay, the notation for intersection here is it's like an upside down U. Uh, so that's shared elements between two sets of numbers. A union just includes all the numbers. So A union B, you've seen this when we do um, interval notation. Uh, it just means all of the elements of set A and set B. And then the complement, okay, you could see the complement used in any of these notations just means every number that's not part of a set. So in order to have a complement, you need a universal set. So if I say like my universal set is um, all numbers 1 through 10, but then my complement, um, like, like I would want the complement of the prime numbers, for instance. So that would be saying, you know, what's every number that's not prime between 1 and 10? Uh, which would be 1, uh, one 4, 6, um, 8, and 9, and 10. So just to give you a little bit more practice with this, I have some examples here. So... Here we have some sets. Set A, set B, set C, and set D. Set A is one, the numbers 1, 3, and 4. Set B is all, X is all numbers, so that X is an even whole number less than 9. So like if you wanted to rewrite this, what are the even whole numbers less than 9? It's 2, 4, 6, 8. Set C is 2, 5, 7, and 10. And then set D is uh, all the numbers that are odd whole numbers less than 10. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 would be set D. So if I ask for um, this this notation here that's saying A union B, what are all the numbers that are in A and B? And if any of them repeat, just write them once. So A is 1, 3, and 4. We said B was 2, 4, 6, 8. So all the numbers there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. That's all the numbers included. What is C union D? Okay, so that again, all the numbers that are included. So 2, 5, 7, 10. We said that D was 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. What are all the numbers that are included there? It's 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. How about B intersection C? What are all the now here they have to be shared. There has to be an overlap. So what are all the numbers that show up in both B and C? B was 2, 4, 6, 8. C is 2, 5, 7, 10. So the only number there is 2. 2 is the only number that shows up on both. How about A intersection C? So what numbers show up on both A and C? A is 1, 3, 4. C is 2, 5, 7, 10, so known as the empty set. There is no number that is part of both. Okay. Now let's say that we're given this universal set. That U there means universal. You can almost kind of think of it as union. This is like a collection of numbers. And then out of this union, there's um. Uh, a subset known as P. So if we wanted to know what is the complement of P, so what are all the numbers that are part of the universal set that are not part of P? That would be 1, 3, 5, and 7. So once we get from, uh, from set notation, now we can start getting into probability. So how do we compute probability? Well, probability is the observed number, uh, the, the, the number of times some event occurs divided by um, the total amount that it could have occurred, the total possible amount. How many times did something happen divided by how many times it could have happened? So part divided by whole. But there's two types of simple, what are called simple probability. Okay, simple probability is just like one fraction. So there's theoretical probability, uh, which the best way I could describe this is uh, theoretical probability is before the events occur calculating the, the possible outcomes before anything would occur. Uh, so, like, for instance, if I flip a coin up ten times, um, what's the theoretical probability uh, of getting um, heads? I should, I should get heads five out of those ten times because I have a one and two chance. But if I were to actually flip a coin ten times, maybe I get heads seven times. You know, things happen. So that's 
Um, oh, well, that's not here, but okay. Uh, I thought it was here, but that, that, that would be called empirical probability. If you see empirical probability, now that's based on data. If I flip that coin and that coin actually comes out seven out of ten times, then, um, then my empirical probability was, because it was based on data, it, it has already occurred, um, would be seven out of ten, for instance. Uh, the probability of something not occurring. Well, if, if a certainty is 100%, something that is certain to occur is 100%, and as a decimal that's expressed as one, then the probability of something not occurring, it's kind of like the complement, would be one minus the probability of it occurring, also as a decimal. If something has a 54% chance of happening, the chance of it not happening would be 1 minus 0.54. So here we go with some uh, concepts of probability. These, are, these will be uh, elaborated on on the coming um, slides. So independent events. Independent events are where one event does not affect the outcome of the other. So if you were to calculate the combined probability, and now we start getting into what's called the, the simple probability, which is just one fraction. Um, but now we're getting into compound probability, which is more than one event occurring. What's the probability of multiple events occurring? So we're talking about independent events. If one does not affect the other, the way that you calculate it is by multiplying. Okay? If, we have, uh, if one event does affect the other one, then we would still multiply, but we would multiply the probability of the first times what's known as the probability of the second on the condition of the first. Okay, the probability of B on the condition of A. Um, conditional probability. Okay, so this is basically, if you look here, this is kind of, you know, how, how would that conditional probability be calculated? Well, it's the probability of both occurring, which you saw up here, if they were in, uh, you know, divided by the probability of the one that we know has occurred, the one, the, the, the one that occurs first. So this is read, the probability of event A occurring on the condition that event B has already occurred would be the probability of both divided by the probability of the one that occurred first. Okay, These here are types of what are called and probability, where both of them have to occur. Okay, Now down here we start getting into or probability, where we want to calculate just what's the probability of one occurring or the other one. Notice how if you look... Here, where the words are, you see the word and showing up here where the and probability is, but now we're going to get into or, okay, where you see the words or. So, if uh, an, another thing you want to keep in mind, when you're thinking of and probability, think of multiplication. But when you're thinking of or probability, think of addition. Now, if you have what are called mutually exclusive events, which is kind of similar to the independent events of and, one has nothing, effect in it to, uh, nothing in common with the other one. If the two events do not affect each other, you can find their compound probability, their or probability, by just adding them individually the probability of the first plus the probability of the second. But there, if they do affect each other, if there is a probability of both of them occurring at the same time, um, then you would add the individual probabilities, but then subtract that probability of them both occurring at the same time. If they were to both occur, that has to be subtracted at the end. You'll see examples of this when we do the examples on the videos. Then finally, uh, uh, this complementary events, you already saw that. If you have the complement of, of uh, you know, what's the probability of something not happening, it's 1 minus the probability of it happening. You saw that um, right up here at the uh, above. It's the same thing. Okay, fundamental counting principle. Uh, the fundamental counting principle says, you know, what are the different uh, number of possible um, Events that could occur, if you have to calculate how many different combinations there are, just multiply the numbers. Uh, if I'm in a lunch line and there's uh, three slices of bread, four different, you know, four different types of cheese and uh, five different types of meats, and I want to figure out how many sandwiches I can make, three times four times five. 
That's called the fundamental counting principle. So permutations, okay? A permutation is if I'm given a group and I want to figure out how many different arrangements that I can make, but where if I, ha if I use the same if I use the same objects, but just by putting them in a different order, if that constitutes a different arrangement, then that would be a, considered a permutation. This is the formula for permutation. This little exclamation mark is known as a factorial. Okay. Now, the good news is all scientific calculators do permutation, so you don't really need to know, at least for the purposes of this class, if you ever take a stats class, you'll get into factorials more, for, but for the purposes of this class, just knowing where to find your permutation button should be enough. And then also knowing what a permutation is. Okay. Uh, combinations. Uh, well, one more thing about permutations. Um, Permutations, uh, the, the formula on top um, assumes that there won't be repetition, that you cannot use the same object twice. Um, but if you can use the same object twice, then, then you would have to divide. Um, so if, 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 if you are able to repeat an object you know, a certain amount of times, um, you have to divide by, um, in each case, like, by how many times that object would repeat. We'll get into that in the examples. Combinations. Now, combinations are, again, having to deal with arrangements. But now, if I have the same group of whatever it may be, people, um, you know, objects, whatever it may be, and with that same group, just putting them in a different order, if that doesn't constitute um, a different arrangement, if, if, if I'm making a team of people and I have the same five people and I put them at different positions, but we consider that to still be the same team, then that's known as a combination. This is the formula here for combinations, but again, you just need to know how to find your combination button. Okay. Then we get into binomial probability, which we saw earlier this year. We got a taste of it when we did Pascal's triangle. So... Um, You'll see this, uh, th this will make more sense to you when we do examples as well. Just know that for now with this formula, when we do bi binomial probability, this means the number of combinations times probability of an event occurring times probability of an event not occurring. Okay, or probabilities. Uh, so we talked about this before. So mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. Um, we talked about the formulas for each. So if you're going to calculate or probability, what's the one thing you want to always remember is addition. We're going to add. But now the only thing that you have to remember is that if there's, like you, you see with cards, you see it a lot of times with cards. Um, if, if I draw one card, it is impossible to get a king and a queen at the same time. So if we ask, hey, what's the probability of getting a king or a queen? I would get the probability of a king the probability of a queen and just add them. But then if I ask, hey, what's the, uh, what's the probability of getting an ace or a spade? Well, now it is possible to get both because there does exist an ace of spades. So if there is overlapping, if we do have overlapping, then it's still the same addition, but then at the end you have to subtract the intersection. You have to subtract for both. So you would get, like, for instance, in the example I gave you, you know, how many aces divided by how many cards in total, plus... How many spades are there divided by how many cards in total? But then at the end, minus the intersection in which, you know, there's one ace of spades. So you would subtract that at the end, the probability of that at the end. Okay. Lastly, two-way tables. You should have seen these in Algebra 1. Okay, this can also be used to calculate probability. Okay, where just to give you, um, you know, these relate to Venn diagrams because we know about, you know, uh, Numbers that just belong to one set, numbers that belong to the other set, the intersection, and then over here is the complement that belongs to none of them. And this, inf this same information could be placed into a two-way table. In this particular case, we are comparing um, students who take a foreign language to, to, to students who, um, who play a sport. So just so you know some words here, the marginal frequencies, okay, um, which are the, the totals that are in the margins. These are known as the marginal frequencies over here. That's what each column or row adds up to. 
The joint frequency are what's in the body. These here are known as the joint frequencies. That's where the intersections are. Each number where a row in, uh, where a row intersects a column. The relative frequency are is the observations in a category divided by total. So if I were to get one of my marginal frequencies and divide it by a total, then that's known as a relative frequency. And then conditional um, relative frequency is when you get a joint, something from where that's right now where the blue is, and divided by one of the margins, divided by where the, um, the red circles were by a marginal frequency.